Greetings, citizens, and thanks for tuning in to episode 60 of the Nindy Nation podcast. I'm Jeff, and if you're new here, welcome. Nindy Nation is a weekly podcast focused on everything independently developed for the Nintendo Switch and a part of the Nintendo Village. Each week, we'll take a look at every indie game releasing on the Switch, and in our second half, we'll dig through the digital smorgasbord of deals and pick out the cream of the crop so that you can keep your Joy-Con synced with the best Nindies at the best price. Nindy Nation posts in audio form on all major podcast services on Sunday, and on Monday, you can find a video version over on the Nindy Nation YouTube channel with footage of every game discussed. While you're there, check out our Let's Plays and other videos about the Nindies we love, and for up-to-the-minute deals or just general Nindy conversation, follow us on Twitter at Nindy Nation. For everything else Nintendo-related, head on over to the NintendoVillage.com for daily news, features, weekly podcasts, and shows. Nindy Nation is brought to you by the Nintendo Village, and we thank them for their support. Thanks, guys. This week, we're covering new games and the best deals available from April 11th through the 17th. But there's always a few games that slip through the digital cracks. So to kick things off, let's take a look at the notable Nindies you may have missed and we missed since episode 59. Push the Box is a simple, single-screen puzzle game by a Nindy newcomer called E-Solutions. As the title suggests, you just push boxes in as few moves as possible, and while it looks like a somewhat decent 99 cent game, it unfortunately launched for $8.89. However, the title we missed last week that I'm definitely most excited for is a new one-bit asteroids-like top-down shooter called Null Drifter by East Asia Soft. It's only four bucks, it features Game Boy-like graphics, and includes arcade modes as well as a longer story-like campaign mode where you can collect currency and upgrade your ships. If I'm able to get the music I've heard from this game, it's definitely going to be in the intro of this week's episode. So future Jeff, don't forget to get the music from this game. <laughs> Null Drifter looks like a fun, simple game if you've already worn out Bit Blaster XL and want something else maybe a little more faster paced. Black Rainbow is a new point-and-click adventure set in the Amazon by developer Katia Games. It's only 10 bucks and seems competent enough if solving puzzles and exploring the Amazon are what you're looking for this week. And while I try to keep things positive here on Nindy Nation, occasionally we just gotta dump on something a little bit, and this week's victim, unfortunately, just might be from publisher Jet Dogs, who released a time management simulator, <laughs> which they call quote-unquote breathtaking. It's called 12 Labors of Hercules II, the Cretan Bull, for 8 bucks. <laughs> Sorry, I'm looking at this game and I just can't stop laughing. Here's the thing. Jet Dogs claims that over 1 million people downloaded the original game, but I've never heard of it, and I cover literally every Nindy that releases every week and have for almost two years, so I don't know. Maybe it's older. It's a mobile time waster. You click on an overworld map and you have Hercules do tasks that don't really matter because it's all just click, get a thing, wait for a timer, click, do the next thing. Man, a million people played the original? <laughs> it must have been one of those penny games. Anyways, a new version of one of the best Super Nintendo-style action games on the Switch released last week with Battle Princess Madeline Royal Edition by Monster Bath Studios. Fans of Ghosts and Goblins or other challenging side-scrolling action games should be all over Battle Princess Madeline if you're not already. Apparently, the Royal Edition is actually a complete rebuild of the game with redesigned stages, new enemies, upgraded visuals, and a new soundtrack. The original game was great without the upgrades, and a great way to spend 15 bucks, so I'm interested to see how the Royal Edition pans out, which launched just last week, also for 15 bucks. Baltoro Games continued their trend of digitizing extremely simple real-life games and charging way too much for them with Solitaire Deluxe Bundle last week, which is, I guess, 
three different solitaire games for $15. So there's that. And we've covered games from Satbox in the past, like Desktop Soccer. And last week, they released Desktop Basketball, which is a cute, arcadey basketball game featuring blocky pixel players and a bunch of little mini games. These games aren't bad, but they frequently go on sale for half off, so wishlist this one if you're interested in it. It's a pretty good title for kids, I would say, and it just launched for $7.20. And finally, of last week's notable Nindies, Digital Game Group, a publisher we've started to see a lot of recently, released a colorful, side-scrolling, endless runner about a cuddly waddly wabbit called Rocket Rabbit Coin Race. Again, this one is probably a fun distraction for a couple of bucks, but it launched for $8, so if you're looking for some endless running action, I'd say maybe wishlist this one and or pick up Miles and Kilo instead. That game is mwah. Chef's Kiss. You know, a bunch of these publishers, Digital Game Group, Baltoro Games, CFK, they haven't been active on the eShop for very long, but as soon as they showed up, the floodgates just opened, and I'm a bit concerned they're going to start becoming just more suppliers of shovelware. I have, however, seen a couple of titles recently that I almost picked up, and I hope that I see something I can really recommend from one of them soon. We don't need any more Kairosofts out here. But do any of these publishers have titles coming out in the week ahead? (laughs) Probably. How's that for a transition? Anyways, last week's smaller-than-usual new release list is Ancient History, and the eShop is back in action with 20 new games by independent developers. Here are the new Nindy releases for next week, covering April 11th through April 17th. Cubic Games and Choice Provisions bring a tactical turn-based survival sim to the eShop on April 11th called Tharsis. You'll take control of four astronauts with many more to unlock as you manage your resources and try to decode the mysterious signal coming from a base on Mars. Sounds mysterious. After last week's Convoy, this is another game similar to FTL, and I like what I'm seeing here, more so than with Convoy. 12 bucks seems like a good price, and I appreciate the various difficulty levels they offer because these games can get tough. Tharsis is yet another new release from Cubic Games as they are quickly becoming one of my favorite Nindy publishers. On April 14th, a new indie publisher and developer named Experimental Game Studios released Boot Hill Bounties, a classic turn-based RPG set in the Wild West. It brings a couple of unique features to the well-represented genre. The visuals do leave a bit to be desired, but the active time battle system and support for up to four players adds to what could be a promising new RPG series. Boot Hill Bounties is regularly 15 bucks, but launches on sale for only $9.74. And another new developer, Journeybound Games, are launching their serene puzzle game, Path of Giants, for $8.99 on April 14th as well. You'll control three cute little dudes who explore a snowy mountain and help them solve all sorts of puzzles in a nicely presented isometric world where you'll need to get all three of these little dudes working together to make sure nobody gets left behind. Speaking of publishers that consistently release lower-budget titles on a weekly basis, Ultimate Games drops Doubles Hard on April 15th for $5.99. In Doubles Hard, you are placed inside of a cube which you need to rotate in order to navigate. You collect diamonds, you avoid falling rocks, and you do it all while racing against opponents. It doesn't look terribly exciting. Moving ahead to April 16th, the first release of the jam-packed Thursday drop is a title I'm almost positive Triple Scale Games is hoping to sell for 15 bucks on its name alone. Uh, Save Your Nuts is admittedly a clever name for a game about squirrels, but is otherwise a couch co-op party game for up to eight players that includes a bunch of physics-based minigames ranging from sports to standard minigame button-mashing fare. And H2 Interactive is banking on your nostalgia for classic top-down racing games, you know, like RC Pro-Am or Rock and Roll Racing, with their pixelated retro take on the genre, Super Pixel Racers. For $13.49, you can go solo or play with up to three friends in traditional races, or try out Destruction Derby, Cat and Mouse, or a handful of other modes. And I think Super Pixel Racers looks like a really good time. 
I'll tell you what, though, there is certainly no shortage of chill puzzle titles or multiplayer party games over the next week. And the next release on April 16th by Ground Control Studios just adds to that with their chill puzzle game Zed, Z-H-E-D, if I need to clarify. I swear, the more and more of these we get, the the harder it is to describe them. This one is like Minesweeper, but with a twist, maybe? I don't know. They're all starting to look the same to me, but I don't mean that in a bad way. Most of these games are actually pretty cool, but anyways, if you want to try out Zed, the chill puzzle game, it's all yours for $3.25. I give up with these. I can't do it anymore. (laughs) Oh, snap. This week's underage anime schoolgirl visual novel is something feisty. The Fox Awaits Me is another outrageously expensive title by Kosen, bringing all the preteens with animal attributes to your Switch for $44.99. And I... Should I read the description? This is already going to be a long episode, but it's been a while, so let's just do this. Cue the music. When I came to, I was in a bamboo grove. I was in a stupor, so I didn't know where I was, and I couldn't remember who I was. There was one bell on a bamboo branch that was ringing as it swayed in the wind. While still charmed by it, I took this somewhat strange bell and hung it from my neck. Home. I started to walk through the bamboo grove. That's when the wind suddenly fluttered around me, and when I looked back at that moment, I saw a small, pale hand. Master... Is that you? A single fox girl was standing there. She was crying and looked very happy. Wait, what? That's not where I thought that was going. The fox girl Shua yearns for the main character Kaito while they live in the forest near a pond. The mountain deity Mim interferes with Kaito and Shua, and the grim reaper Karen accidentally almost kills Kaito. (laughs) Whoa, (laughs) she got real there for a second. (laughs) Anyways... Once they meet, the sad fate of the fox and the boy springs into action again. Can Kaito, who lost his memories, oppose that fate? Whatever that was. Later, daters! Looks awesome. At least in premise. With colorful, happy visuals abound, you assume the role of an octogenarian, which is, of course, someone between the ages of 80 and 89, and then live out your golden years in ye old retirement community, trying to swoon the fellow senior citizen of your choosing. It looks great. This lovely little gem of an indie is brought to us by Bloom Digital and will be available on April 16th for $7.99. And I cannot wait to see all of the streams of this game. And East Asia Soft has seen another release on the Switch this week with um, Kawaii Deathu Desu, which is a side-scrolling beat-em-up where you play as... A pop icon in the underworld, mowing down as many people as you can to become the American idol of the underworld? It looks, uh, well, it looks like it launches for four bucks. It doesn't look too bad, actually. (laughs) Indies, right? Developer Storybird brings a sequel to a game I've never heard of, but am immediately intrigued by, with Finding Teddy 2 Definitive Edition. It's a side-scrolling pixel art action RPG, and they're just really saying all the right things for me here. It takes place in a girl's nightmare as she's trying to save her stuffed animal, which is a fun premise, I suppose, but on looks alone, it's quite impressive and boasts 20 hours of gameplay, which is a ton for only 10 bucks. I am definitely checking out Finding Teddy 2, and so should you. And Eight Floor Games is a publisher that released, um, something last week. I don't, I don't remember what, but I wasn't terribly excited for it. And this week isn't much different with Lost Artifacts Golden Island, which it shows so very little in terms of gameplay that it's hard to tell exactly what it is. It claims to be an exciting strategy and resource management game, but seriously, everything I can find about this game is just still images with a clickable next button below. So I don't know what else to say other than it's a $10 digital picture book. Come on, guys. I can't care about your game if you don't. (laughs) I don't know what they want from me. Hey, fun! Another genre-bending puzzle game. These have been good recently. Pixel Cross Adventure is a blend of Picross, Nonogram, and RPG mechanics all wrapped up in a pixelated world that looks full of 
cool, fun things to see. It's kind of hard to tell what it's themed around, but I like what I'm seeing. That's all I can really tell you. It's 10 bucks, and it releases by Score Studios and Plugin Digital, who have released a lot of games I've liked recently. If you like Picross-style games, check this one out. It's a little different. And Joybits brings us a super cool side-scrolling shoot-'em-up developed by Qplays for only 5 bucks, called Galaxy Warfighter, which admittedly is one of the most generic names I've ever heard of, but don't let that deter you. It's got great graphics that blend pixel art with HD backgrounds, very well might I add, a ship upgrade system, and a dynamic difficulty that will get harder the further you progress. Chalk up Galaxy Warfighter as one of my picks of the week. Can Androids Play? Blue is a critically acclaimed 3D narrative short story about two mech pilots stranded at the end of the world and is said to be right up the alley of fans who like Bradbury, Asimov, and other great sci-fi writers. Hmm, that's pretty high praise. Can Androids Play is only six bucks and is published by a priori digital. Interesting. Looks cool. Wow, and another critically acclaimed narrative game. But this one is a love story with a heavier dose of puzzles to solve called A Fold Apart by Lightning Rod Games. And this one looks really cool. You play as two lovers who are now separated in a long-distance relationship, and the gameplay has you folding and rotating various parts of the screen, or page as it were, to find the outcome that brings them back together. I love this stuff. It actually reminds me of an iPad game my daughter loves called Bring You Home, and a fold apart looks equally great, but with maybe more narrative and and heavier themes. It's 20 bucks, so it is on the pricier side of indie releases, so I don't know, maybe you want to wait for a sale, but hey, if you like these kind of games, you've got the time and the credit burning a hole in your digital pocket, I say go for it. A fold apart looks great. Blind Men, developed by Man Eater Games, is the next in the massive list of visual novels that Radaleka has been publishing over the last few and the next few months. In this one, you are the nephew of a supervillain just trying to find his way. But what I dig about it is that depending on how you play, you can make the game a total parody of itself or a totally serious spy adventure. And that's a pretty cool twist. Blind Men is, as are all other Radaleka titles, only five bucks. I got really excited when I saw the next game's title as Theme Park Simulator. <laughs> I was all ready for a roller coaster tycoon game or something, but no. This is literally a simulator where you can ride or control a bunch of amusement park rides, and it looks like it was released for Windows 95, which I say because I owned a game just like this and used to love it when I was 11 years old. Nowadays, though, being stuck inside, it just seems kind of mean to tease us like this with summer right around the corner. Plus, just about every amusement park now has YouTube channels full of videos just like this, but, you know, the real thing. Oh, this game is by BLG Publishing, and it's 15 bucks, and, uh, I don't really think you should buy it. Now I'm gonna say no to this one. A pixelated tough-as-nails platformer is something we see all the time here on Nindy Nation, but what if I told you the premise of this title... Hers in Heaven, is about a cute little kitty cat who has died and is working through a trial to come back to life. Enjoy Up Games is really hoping that'll get you to shell out $6.99, but I'm just not really seeing anything else that's too spectacular here. And unfortunately, spectacular is exactly what you've got to be if you want to break out in this genre nowadays. But I want to say kudos to Sakari Games for releasing a, quote, What is Rover Wars in Two Minutes or Less video right on their game's description page. Rover Wars is a real-time strategy game, but with a very casual slant to make it easy to pick up, and gameplay that encourages up to eight players to join in via drop-in, drop-out gameplay, all within a sci-fi robot theme that looks great. Rover Wars has a single-player campaign and a boatload of options for co-op or competitive play, and I love what they're doing here, especially with it launching for only 6 bucks. I was about to dismiss this game, but Sakari's foresight to add the video that easily explains exactly what this game is, somebody should go buy that game just for that and and tell them that Nindy Nation said thank you. Actually, you know what? I'm going to take a note and say thank you. So look for that on Twitter, at Nindy Nation. Shameless plug. Bit Dragon 
almost had my $13 with their neon-soaked cyberpunk top-down arcade brawler until I learned it was a match-based multiplayer arena brawler and not something more traditional, I guess. So if you like those brawling games that are strictly competitive, Hyper Jam does seem to bring all the goods. I'm just really bummed it couldn't be the genre that I dig, because otherwise it looks really cool. I usually rag on Jandusoft games, but our last title this week and the sole release on April 17th is right up my alley, and it might be my pick of the week. Freak Out, Calamity TV Show, basically takes the premise of Smash TV, but with more violence, and instead of being a room-clearing twin-stick shooter, you run through large worlds, defeating hordes of enemies and tackling massive bosses, and it's only $9.99. Yeah. I think Calamity is definitely the game for me this week. What about you? There's just about everything this week. RPGs like Boot Hill Bounties, puzzle games like Zed, plenty of multiplayer titles like Hyper Jam, Super Pixel Racers, or Save Your Nuts. And there's even titles like A Fold Apart and Robot Wars that blend genres together to become their own unique thing. Let me know what you're picking up on Twitter at Nindy Nation, and we'll talk about it. But before you go spending all that money next week, Let's take a look at what's on sale this week. A lot of titles from last week's massive sale are still live for a few more days, so I'm not going to run through those again, but we will take a look at the 230 new deals that hit the eShop this week and help you find just the thing to keep those Joy-Cons synced. Let's do it! Mech Rage is a simple twin-stick shooter I've mentioned before. It's nothing spectacular, but it's only 49 cents, and I had an evening or two of fun out of it. At 95% off, it's hard not to recommend. Round Guard is the new Peggle Meets RPG title that everyone seems to love. I haven't played it, but it's already 20% off for $15.99, so I might pick it up. Slay the Spire is the beloved card-battling deck-building game that has won many outlets Game of the Years not too long ago, and it's also 25% off for $18.74. Especially on the Switch, Chasm is one of the better Metroidvania titles, which I've recently heard referred to as an exploration platformer, and I might start using that term more often. Anyways, Chasm adds procedurally generated levels into the mix and is a great title, especially half off for only 10 bucks. Double Cross is the beautiful action platformer by the team who made Runbo and is a really easy recommendation for someone that's just looking for a game that's fun to play. It's 75% off for only 5 bucks, and this is definitely one of the two titles this week that is strongly recommended for just about anybody. The other one has to be Graceful Explosion Machine, which is 65% off for $4.50. I will say, this twin-stick space shooter is probably the title I have launched the most on my Switch over the last three years, and I have over 200 games in my library. Vertex Pop, the developer, also also recently released the wonderful Super Crush KO, and you will not be disappointed with Graceful Explosion Machine. So there's two deals of the week. Habroxia is a side-scrolling shoot-em-up for people who love classic side-scrolling shoot-em-ups, you know, like R-Type, Life Force, and so on, and it's half off for $3.99. There are very few games like Minute, the one-bit retro take on a Zelda-like adventure that only takes place one minute at a time. It's hard to recommend because it is so different, but if you trust yourself to try something that's pretty different and out there, knowing that it's critically acclaimed by many, check it out because it's also half off and a great deal at only $4.99. Monkey Barrels is a twin-stick shooter that I made a Let's Play review for over on the Nindy Nation YouTube channel that I absolutely love. It'll last you a good 10 or so hours, and it has a ton of upgrades and things to collect that'll give you something to work on well after the credits roll. Monkey Barrels is only 20% off, but I haven't seen it on sale much yet, and I think the $12 that it's going for right now is a great price for it. 
and maybe call this a technical, but Sonic Mania is the only game in the Sonic series that was actually developed by an indie team, and it's so good that I'm including it. So I don't care if you don't consider it an indie. It's half off, it's 10 bucks, it's probably the best Sonic game in 25 years, and if you haven't played it, you should. The 2D Sonic games are great. Go ahead, at me. I dare you. <laughs> The Forbidden Arts is a really unique entry that is half 3D action adventure and half 2D side-scrolling platformer, and you get all kinds of cool magic fire abilities to play with. Check out the video, and if you think it looks cool, you'll probably dig it. It took me a while to finally dive into this one. The Forbidden Arts is also half off right now, and is only $7.49, so take a chance on it. And finally, Ukulele and the Impossible Layer is probably the best 2D platformer to release since Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, and probably just one of the best 2D platformers, I mean, pretty much ever? It feels bad to speak so much hyperbole, but it sits among the best entries in any comparable series, and if you're a fan of the Donkey Kong Country titles and you haven't played this one yet, get it now because it's 33% off for only 20 bucks. And there's a ton of game there for 20 bucks. There's a lot of other incredible titles on sale through April 20th or 23rd, so hit the eShop or check out last week's video to make sure you're not missing anything. Nobody wants to admit or advertise it, but <laughs> we're definitely getting the old coronavirus sale because publishers know we're all stuck indoors, and I mean, might as well take advantage of it, right? Of course, you can follow us on Twitter at Nindy Nation for the latest deals as soon as they drop, and I love hearing your feedback about the show or just chatting up video games. If you want to see any of the games we discussed, each episode of Nindy Nation posts to YouTube on Monday, complete with footage of every game discussed right after the audio goes live on podcast feeds Sunday night. Otherwise, that puts the pin in this week's episode of Nindy Nation. I gotta go head to bed before the Easter Bunny gets here. With two little kids, you never know how much sleep you'll get the night before a mystical creature shows up at your house donning gifts and general wonder. But I thank you for listening this week and wish you the best of Easter and spring and, uh, everything. Hopefully you got your fill of indie goodness with us this week, but if you're still in search of other Nintendo content, well, we're hosted by the Nintendo Village, and those fine folks are pumping out all kinds of great content. Daily articles and news, features, reviews, podcasts, and even shows over on their YouTube channel. So you should check them out, and you can find everything they do in one place at the thenintendovillage.com. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for listening, watching, sharing, all that good stuff, friends and citizens. Thank you. This wraps up episode 60 of the Nindy Nation podcast, and I look forward to chatting with all of you online and meeting up to chat all things Nindy again next week. Until then, I'm Jeff. This has been Nindy Nation episode 60, and no matter what kind of game you're looking for, we'll be right here to help you find just the game you need to keep your Joy-Cons synced.